Good morning, dear participants and dear guests. Today is the third and last day of the sixth international conference on earthquake engineering and seismology. And today's first keynote lecturer, uh, he had his PhD in seismology from Aristotle University of Thessaloniki and um, he had his postdoc in University of Joseph Freer, Grenoble, France in engineering seismology as a uh, Marie Curie uh, fellow. He, he had research visits at Imperial College in UK, in INGV in Italy, in East Terre, France, and Komenis University in Slovakia. And he has also uh, uh, invited professors at uh, postgraduate program of geology department at the Aristotle University of Saloniki since 1995. <clears throat> His main field of interest is engineering seismology and earthquake engineering, especially in strong ground motion modeling, seismic hazard assessment, site effects estimation, using earthquake and ambient noise, strong motion and consequences of destructive earthquakes, planning and operation of axiometric networks, data acquisition and analysis. He has more than 220 publications, peer-reviewed journals and conference proceedings. And he has participation over 70 national and international research projects and he is scientist in charge in 22 research projects and he has been advisor of more than 10 master of science and phd thesis so i would like to give floor to dr theodolidis Good morning from Thessaloniki. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, can you hear me, Jan? Yes, Nikos, we can hear you Super. very well. Okay, thank you so much for your introduction. I am sharing my screen right now. Yes, please. Yeah. Fine. 
So I am going to present you uh, a multinational effort in the Black Sea Basin area with uh, partners from Turkey, Greece, Romania, and Moldova, an effort towards seismic risk mitigation. In fact, the development of a rapid earthquake damage assessment system that will exploit all available knowledge in seismology and earthquake engineering of the last decades. So I split the presentation in five subsections. Firstly, I will try to answer the question, why rapid earthquake damage assessment in Black Sea Basin? Which are the targets of the, the system? Second, about the harmonization in the cross-border area, which is uh, crucial for a successful system. A smartphone disaster, uh, local authorities of the affected area are responsible to respond. Not only local authorities, but also citizens is a very special factor that can influence the total disaster response. That means that it's of ultimate importance that both local authorities, civil protection and citizens must react with efficiency and accuracy. For that reason, if we don't know the spatial distribution of the disaster just after a disastrous event, this fact may lead to dramatic consequences both to citizens and infrastructure and built environment. To the contrary, if these two factors are able to assess and they know the necessary spatial information of the disaster, they can react effectively towards risk management. But to do that, we need a decision-making tool, a reliable decision-making tool. This tool, we name it as a rapid earthquake damage system that can provide to both local authorities and citizens reliably and in time assessment of possible consequences just after a disastrous earthquake. Not only that, but this system, because it incorporates the ability to define a priori uh, chosen seismic scenarios for an area, may also help updating the disaster emergency plan of this area with documented actions towards prevention of the disaster of future earthquakes. We know that uh, there, are, there have been developed many uh, damage assessment tools worldwide during the last uh, three, at least three decades. However, all these systems have been developed mainly in a country level or in, for a specific territory with homogeneous input ingredients. So there is a question, what if neighboring countries are hit by an earthquake? How will it work in the cross-border area of these countries? That's why we thought that 
we need a rapid earthquake damage assessment system in the Black Sea area. And this effort has three main targets. First one is the cross-border coverage, because we know that earthquakes have not borders. Second, this system must provide harmonized outputs. And third, it must be adaptable to all these countries. I recall the of SER project that was developed for Europe will be adapted, certainly with all necessary updates of the area of interest. The GMPs, which is another basic ingredient in our system, will be selected and tested according to methodologies already developed in Europe that will be modified properly for our area. After we select all candidate GMPs, we have started already to test them and ranking them based on several methodologies. And definitely we will propose a logic tree for the area that will be representative. This final logic tree of GMPs <coughs> will be inserted to the system. In fact, the GMP selection and testing will be based on the well-known log likelihood analysis, which is based on information theory approach. This is a, a quite simple <coughs> approach proposed by Sherbao Metal recently that in fact is based on the callback labeler distance of two uh, distribution, normal distributions between data and GMPs. Uh, what is important is that the goal of this strategy is to identify that set of GMPs in order to capture all possible epistemic uncertainties of ground motion prediction in the cross-border area. This effort has already started, is in progress. <clears throat> For instance, in the 2017 earthquake of 6.5 in Bodrum Kos area, you can see here the comparison of recorded and predicted by uh, uh, GMP by different GMPs in this area in order to test them against the real and the actual recordings of this earthquake, both in Turkey and in Greece. In addition, for the Samos 2020 big event in the cross-border area, parallel efforts are in progress between recorded data and various GMPs to see which one is most suitable to be applied in this area. <clears throat> it is important to know that uh, all countries in the cross-border area have a network, a strong motion network of accelerometers that is uh, operating and is ready to record uh, any event in the area. 
Uh, in addition to the rural areas of between these countries, there are uh, big metropolitan areas that we name pilot sites. That means urban environment like Thessaloniki, uh, Kostanta, Gebse, Chisinau, etc., which need a dense accelerometric network in the urban area in order to better estimate the shape map within this area. All this data, both from the national network and the uh, urban area dense one, will be directed to a data repository in real time. And after the alert of the earthquake comes to the rapid earthquake damage assessment system here, the procedure of estimating shake map and consequently damage assessment will start. That's the idea. In fact, regarding the uh, accelerometer dense network in the cities, uh, we will use, we will based on a custom made in-house low cost accelerometer uh, of, uh, that has been already developed and tested in various sites. This is a case study in Lefkas where more than 20 low cost accelerometers installed in the uh, urban area, close to broadband accelerometer stations in order to test them. And they provided, as you can see, for various earthquakes, various real seismic scenarios for the affected area. That is, they are already they have been already tested and these low cost accelerometers in the, uh, our project will be upgraded to second generation low cost instruments that will have 19 bits resolution and continuous data streaming to the data center where the redas will be ready to host them and work with them. We have already started in pilot areas this deployment in Thessaloniki, for instance, by uh, installing them in a special grid in the city and taking into account the geology of the city to cover different uh, soil condition. We definitely uh, could deploy 32 sites uh, of 32 stations in school buildings because schools are sensitive in our project. This pilot study may be deployed also in other uh, uh, pilot cities of the cross-border area. Another factor that is included in the system is the exposure data. In fact, the existing building stock, we know that it's not similar in all partner countries. There are differences that are due to variations in codes and seismic regulations. And of course, in local construction practices. This exposure data, the built environment, uh, need, we need to adapt uh, a common base for all countries participating in this effort. And in general, in Black Sea Basin, provided that we must harmonize the output and overpass any compatibility issues in the rapid earthquake damage assessment software. Uh, the building taxonomy scheme that has been proposed by the global earthquake model known as GEM seems to be suitable in our case. 
because it covers practically uh, the European building classes and, of course, uh, the typologies that are based on attributes and affect the seismic performance. Finally, the uh, various models for the vulnerability assessment of uh, buildings uh, are proposed and based on different approaches. These approaches may be empirical, analytical, or hybrid. And uh, the definition of damage state is important, as well as the intensity measures of seismic excitation, which is needed, which ground parameter will be related to the damage state. Certainly, uh, fragility curves will be adapted and will take into account the fragility curves in a country level. And of course, they will be harmonized. How we will uh, achieve a common model and procedure for the radar system based on these vulnerability models. By This will be achieved by adapting compatible damage states based on, for instance, hazardous approach for damage states and using a set of fragility curves proposed recently by Martins and Silva and have been adapted by the European Seismic Risk Model 2020. We think that the Martins and Silva 2020 fragility curves seem to cover well all building typologies present in the project area. Of course, results will be tested and compared with all available local in countries procedures. About geotechnical hazards uh, regarding the liquefaction susceptibility. Uh, the most critical parameters that will be taken into account of the liquefaction susceptibility for PGA greater than 0.1 G are the geologic age, the environment of deposition of sediments, and the distance from a water body. That's that is well known uh, factors affecting the liquefaction. And of course, the evaluation of liquefaction in regional scale. Uh, will be based on methodology proposed by Holger et al., uh, which in fact computes the probability of liquefaction in a regional scale and can provide liquefaction hazard maps. This probability of uh, surface manifestation of liquefaction depends on peak ground acceleration, PGA, on depth of groundwater table on surface geology material and earthquake magnitude provided by this relation. And finally, uh, landslide hazard will be also uh, included in the system based on two different methodologies. One is the statistical based method and the second is the physically based method. This will be implemented in the system and will be tested in pilot studies and documented before inserted in the system. Concluding for the harmonization in the cross-border area that will involve all these parameters I described before, uh, six fully operational systems will be installed that will have exactly the same functionality in all six partner countries. 
sharing the same data and metadata, except the building and inventories due to restrictions uh, of, uh, because of the sensitivity of this kind of data. This is an open issue, of course. <clears throat> and this is the radar triggering area. In this area, that is shown by the blue line, uh, is the, the triggering area, every event greater than four that occur in this area will alert and trigger the system, the radar system. A few words about uh, <clears throat> smartphone app. And the, the Redact uh, will have this smartphone app application to disseminate data and information and support visibility. Uh, it has already started and in one year it will be ready. Will be deployed on Android compatible, freely available through the Google Play and operate in English plus in three language of the countries. Available and beneficiaries will be schools, general public authorities, etc. What it will do, it will show uh, rapidly uh, all earthquakes that have potential damage in the Black Sea Basin area. It will support crowdsourcing and show contribution as the Did You Feel It system and will contain useful links to Redact Educational Hub and other recommended resources. Certainly, it is not a breakthrough. It will be inspired from different already uh, existing systems like Lastquake, INFP in Romania, Android, Geonet, and others. The Education Hub, this is another component of the, our effort. Uh, it, because we must know how a critical situation is defined, and we must know that what, what is the value of assets at risk, uh, the feasibility to access, to assess assets at risk, of course, all the available resources to reduce the seismic risk, the potential to react depend, depending on the resources, and of course, the time to react. The time to react is really very important. This is a representative, say, a scheme of uh, decision-making under critical conditions, which is five different steps, starting from recognizing the threat up to act, evaluate, and reconsider it. In all cases, in all cases, uh, what is critical is the time of reaction. And it means that citizens and uh, authorities must be educated and trained in advance to react timely and reliably after a strong, a disastrous event. There is plethora of existing documents and leaflets that can be shared in the, in the, to the public to help understanding the, uh, how to uh, react and reduce the consequences. And concluding about the rapid earthquake damage system and how it can help to reduction of uh, seismic risk and what are the perspectives. We can say that uh, the reduction of casualties, especially in urban areas of the Black Sea cross-border area, immediately after a strong event can be improved if the location and severity of damage is rapidly and reliably assessed by a rapid earthquake damage assessment system. Second, this radar system can provide estimation of damage in built and natural environment and infrastructure, lifelines, etc provided that reliable 
models of vulnerability and geotechnical parameters are available in the cross-border area and beyond. However, we must deduce all uncertainties that are inherent in the basic ingredients of earthquake loss assessment, from source parameters to uh, fragility curves and geotechnical parameters. Uh, this is very important and needs to be uh, tackled in the future for viability and reliability of rapid loss assessment in the Black Sea area and beyond. This multinational BSB Black Sea Basin effort will contribute to mitigating the consequences of future damaging ethics. And why and how? First, by guiding post-event emergency plans. Second, by reinforcing the preparedness and response capacity of civil protection and citizens through a, a priori training activities and by supporting decision-making before the event, like preventive measures, and during the recovery phase, enhancing thus societal resilience. And closing, we can say that this REDAS sustainability can be assured in the Black Sea Basin because all involved countries are exposed to high seismicity and risk because most of them operate seismic networks with long experience in seismic risk assessment and they can collaborate in the system can be incorporated within an ongoing European SAKEMAP initiative. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please. Dr. Theodolidis, uh, I will ask if, from our guests, if there is any question to Dr. Theodolidis. Okay. Uh, may I ask a question, uh, uh, Dr. Theodolidis? Uh, you mentioned about the uh, European Shake Map Initiative, uh, and as far as I know, uh, already in Europe, uh, the seismic hazard map was completed with the SHARE project in 2013. But after that, uh, the studies, the research is still ongoing, and now, uh, as far as I know, the uh, European uh, risk map, seismic risk map uh, initiative has already started. And uh, can you tell us uh, any information about this, the, the risk map in initiation, and how uh, do you think the, this REDAC project uh, can be integrated uh, with this initiative? Thank you, Dr. Zulfikar. Uh, for the question, I, I would like to say that the, all the know-how and the joint effort that uh, the uh, partners of the Red Act project make will be an asset for the European shake map harmonization. In fact, what uh, we know is that uh, with the initiative of uh, INGV and ETH in uh, Switzerland, they would like to build a European shake map, a harmonized European shake map. Because now you know each country has its own shake map, Turkey, Greece, Romania, Switzerland, etc. And for sure, it is better to have a homogenized and harmonized one than different shake maps. So the uh, know-how and experience that will be gained in this effort will, be, will help and contribute to this European effort. This is important. Secondly, the European shake map initiative is just on, remains on shake map 
ground motion parameters. The red act system goes a, a step further. We will examine there all the partners, also the influence on the built environment. And this is certainly, this is uh, something that will also trigger in a European level, the idea of proceeding after the SAKE map to the rapid earthquake damage assessment map. And this in the long term will be very helpful and will contribute to uh, European seismic risk reduction in general. Okay, thank you, Dr. Theodolidis. Uh, so, uh, is there any other question? To guess there is no okay so i think uh, we complete here this lecture uh, thank you dr tedoldis thank you for your participation and for the uh, your valuable lecture thank you so much for the invitation and the opportunity you gave me hello okay thank you bye 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 uh, Evet, sanırım burada tamamlıyoruz bu sesini. Bir aramız olacak sanırım.